what's going on guys welcome back to the channel critical overlord here so we're gonna be talking about a few different horror topics in this video here today we'll be talking about chucky season three we'll be talking and a little bit about season four briefly about season four mostly season three we'll also be talking about final destination six we'll be talking about five nights at freddy's pretty briefly we'll be talking about a zip line kill from friday the 13th the unmade sequel to that reboot we got in 2009 but starting off with chucky don mancini in an interview recently with joe blow has revealed that he has no current plans to pivot away from the characters Lexi, Devin, and Jake as our main characters of the Chucky TV show because he went on to talk about how he thinks the young adult format is working very well for the show right now. He did say that all of this, of course, is bearing ratings and if they get a renewal, obviously. Now, that doesn't mean that Lexi, Devin, and Jake will make it out of season three alive, but keep in mind what I've already told you to expect for their upcoming fates during the finale. But his comment is very telling as someone who has finished the first half already, and currently I don't see a reason to think that they'll die at any point during this season, including in the second half. But you never know. Also, Don has expressed that he has thoughts on where to take season four if they get the renewal, but it won't be space. Thank God. Granted, would he actually admit that he's not doing that? I'll give him the benefit of the doubt and trust that space isn't coming anytime soon, but... Chucky in space, he did say, would be an amusing idea, but he did also say that he doesn't have that on the table for season four. Mancini also talked about and once again confirmed that there are ghosts in the White House. And to answer the question about whether or not this Phantom of the Opera image folks keep tagging me in is a human or not, I think that's actually Chucky because he does wear that as a costume during the finale to hide his aging. However, you will indeed see some ghosts during the finale as well maybe one or two ghosts do indeed seem to be wandering the white house during this finale you'll see that firsthand because remember this season was compared to the shining so it's going in directions that aren't too far-fetched when it comes to ghosts but i also just don't find it very necessary either as a longtime fan as much as i can find it appealing to be exploring dumbala and the mythos a little bit further I would like to see some aspects of the mystique of it all be preserved. That's just me and my own personal belief about how the mystique and the mystery keeps things very scary. As scary as they can be when you're campy as Chucky is. So diving into Final Destination 6. Final Destination 6 production designer Rachel O'Toole, I believe her name is, revealed this about the upcoming film during an interview with the direct recently. She stated, well, we started working and then we were put on hold because of the writer's strike. We were two weeks away from cameras, so we were deeply involved in building that world out. I would say when I read the script, I was like, I continue wanting to read it. And sometimes when you're reading a script, you're just like, okay, 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 chuck this back, you know, like for the interview, pretend to love it. But I actually really did love it. It's got a really fresh take on it, and we do consider it a reboot. But stay tuned, I suppose. I can't say anything about it. So her words about it being a reboot is seem to be where this recent stuff I saw online is coming from, from her, the production designer, calling it a reboot. So it's a reboot, but it also has Tony Todd back according to Bloody Disgusting. So it's like how much of the story really is a reboot? That's what I'm wondering. Also notice how she and others involved have not mentioned the first responder story. Even prior to the strikes, no one was mentioning this. That story that we were being told it would be has seemingly been scrapped. I know that Bloody Disgusting recently brought it back up as being the plan, but I don't think that that is the plan. The audition tapes also do not back up, back up us getting that story unless again, that first responders concept had to have been severely tweaked because i revealed those scrap plans for the first responders movie and no one has gone out of their way to keep hyping that up or even hyping up the revolving door kill that we were going to get in six because now what we've been told about is a is a uh, tattoo parlor kill that will undoubtedly change a lot of people's perspective on getting a tattoo and their experience so that story with Stephanie, her family, a fire, and a tower collapse with her grandmother Esther seems to be what we are getting as far as I can tell. The audition tapes are more than enough evidence of that because the, the audition tapes, again, they don't back up anything for a first responder story. Also, I actually went a step further and sent Bloody Disgusting's report to someone who would have better knowledge on the subject. And I was told that the first responders mention is likely not accurate any further because the story indeed has changed. We know it's changed back if we're going off of those audition tapes. So I wouldn't be expecting a first responder story. Now diving into Five Nights at Freddy's. Five Nights at Freddy's is releasing in theaters and on Peacock simultaneously this week. It is not releasing on Peacock though this Thursday as I've seen reported because apparently Peacock responded to a fan on Twitter to confirm this error and the app has recently updated to reflect the appropriate date which is the 27th. 
But then for everyone saying, but One Take News says, but One Take News says. Well, One Take News didn't exactly report that as much as they took the report from another site and shared it, then gave the site credit as the source. So it's just an example of a more than proven reliable site being wrong in this instance. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with being wrong every now and again. Not a big deal. Having credibility doesn't mean you can you cannot be wrong a few times. Also, the embargo does not lift on Thursday either because I got a few messages saying, well, One Take News put out this about the embargo. And they thought that I said that it lifted on this date and time. It is indeed lifting on that date and time, guys. It's not lifting on the 27th anymore. It got pushed to lift on the 26th at 3 a.m. still. That's still the time. If it changes again, I will update it on my Twitter feed. The movie is indeed going to be open for critics to review on October 26th at 3 a.m. Eastern. I'll be seeing it a few hours prior to that. And then I'll come home, do my spoiler free review, put it up on the channel. Apparently, the test screenings for this movie went very well. So I hope I enjoy it because I did dig these games when I was younger. Uh, and I have been seeing that they're borrowing a lot of the lore from the games and implementing it into the film. But I don't want to spoil it for those of you who aren't familiar with the game and are just going into it blindly with the uh, film. Hope you enjoy it. But diving into the last topic here, Friday the 13th. So... The creative team behind the remake shared a kill that we could have gotten in the sequel that we never got. So a zipline kill from the unmade Friday the 13th sequel to the 2009 reboot was shared online recently, and I'll leave a link to the tweet. But basically, it would have involved a character named Val who wanted to clear her head, so she decided to go ziplining. She climbs the tower, straps herself into the harness, looks around the Crystal Lake setting at the top before letting herself go down the zipline. She's enjoying it and having fun, uh, but notice Jason notices Jason at the end waiting for her. Jason is ready waiting at the end with the machete in his hand she starts panicking going oh shit is what she said i believe according to the script pages and of course she's not gonna make it despite her efforts to make it because by the time she gets there he just slices her in half with the machete and it's described as him swinging for the fences like he's in the world series which i thought was funny and apparently she's still alive after this but he takes care of her and finishes the job so her body was still moving to some degree despite being cut in half but yeah that was the zipline kill that we missed out on in this unmade sequel to the friday the 13th 2009 reboot let me know what you guys think about all of this down in the comment section below what are your thoughts on those tidbits from chucky season three from don mancini himself he's also hyped up that also a lot of the stuff that you've heard from season three now will be explored a little further in in the later half but no real surprise there let me know what you think about this down in the comment section below if you haven't already of course make sure you subscribe turn on post notifications and never miss a video in the description i have links to my social media accounts i am on facebook twitter and instagram you can message me there of course if there's any movies news or reviews i'm going to cover in the future and with all that in mind guys i will see you in the next video